Hi, I'm Brad Halliday with MediaSag. I wish I could have been with you today, but travel didn't allow for that. But give me a few minutes to introduce myself, and then I will share with you more about our company and our tools. MediaSag is a software company that provides variety trial data management and analytics software, as well as some other tools that are available to the ag community. This morning, we're going to be talking about our product, Medias.re, which provides research and analytics availability to industries such as small grains, including wheat, but also potato industry, cotton, and peanuts as well. We work with clients all across the United States in these various sectors. So if you give me a few minutes here this morning, allow me to show you some of what our tool can do for you. We are going to go ahead and use NC State's usage of Medias.re for our example this morning. Um, NC State utilizes Medias.re for wheat, soybeans, and corn, but let's go ahead and focus on wheat. So the first thing you'll see is a dashboard. This dashboard is customizable to your needs. This is what uh, NC State has chosen, but it helps growers and users be able to find information that they're looking for rather quickly. There are typically three things that most people are looking for when they come to look at variety trial data, particularly with medias.re. The first one is you're trying to find a specific variety, so something that was recommended to you by another grower, by a seed salesperson, um, and you want to find out more information about it. The second way is you have specific parameters that you're looking for a variety to meet, and so you can go ahead and query for varieties based on those parameters. And the third aspect is looking at the varieties that are available in the trial system and finding the best ones for you. So we'll go ahead and look at the first one with find variety. You could click here or right here simply. Uh, there is a way to search. So let's say we were looking for a variety called bullet. Type what you know about the variety and it will help you find it. So I'll go ahead and select bullet. And what we see here is we're now getting a high level summary view of this variety. So I can see all of the locations that this variety was trialed in and the number of years that this variety was trialed in and if there's any um, company information or if it was known by another name, I could find it there as well. You'll see there'll be a couple featured images as specified uh, by NC State. In this particular case, to give you an indication of what you should expect to see with this variety and then a link to a text sheet or a data sheet available from the seed source itself. And then if there's any other additional attributes provided, you'll see those down here. So in the case of NC State, one of the things that they've provided is your resistance level to different diseases, uh, as well as other attributes such as uh, growing degree units and uh, the head type. The second tab you'll see up here is called Trials. What this will show you is a high level view of the variety's performance across the entire system of what's available and they'll be grouped by the different regions that are specified by the client and you can see these locations that are part of these regions up here. So I can scroll down and I can see uh, the yield difference between different regions as well as any other characteristics that would be collected as a part of the trial system. If I wanted to know more information about what makes up this average, all I have to do is click on the value and I will see a breakdown of all of the trials and the values that make up that average to give me an indication of a variety's performance over time and over space. Again, we're just trying to get a high level understanding of this particular variety to know if it's something we might be interested in. The second or the third tab that you'll see up here is images. And so if there have been any images or videos uploaded to um, the trialing system as a part of this variety, those will show up here as well. If you wanted to share this with anybody, all you have to do is click on this copy link. It will generate a QR code for you if you want, or you can uh, it will have a URL that you could text or email or share with anybody that you needed to share with. One interesting use case of this is we have clients that will utilize this for field days and they'll print the QR code and put it on a stake at the beginning of a plot or a row for a field day and allow people to be able to pull up more detailed information about that particular plot. 
And this share uh, feature is available in all of the different um, features within medias.re. So let's say then you're looking for um, a variety that meets some specific requirements. So we're going to go ahead and query our variety here. So the first thing I'm going to specify is I'm going to look for a yield. And I want my yield to be greater than 100 uh, bushels per acre. And then I care about lodging percentage. So I want to make sure that my lodging percentage is less than, let's just say, 10% uh, for sake of discussion here at the moment. Um, and then I want to make sure that it has some disease resistance. Uh, so I particularly care about stripe rust because that's important to me. So I want to find varieties that are either moderately resistant or resistant to uh, stripe rust. And then last but not least, let's say uh, I have farms that are in uh, a couple locations here, so Rowan and Union. Uh, if I have farms in both those locations, I want to find varieties that um, give me a yield greater than 100, uh, lodging less than 10%, and that they're moderately resistant or resistant to stripe rust. And so when I go ahead and hit search, this is going to give me a list of varieties where at some point in time, uh, these varieties all achieved these results in a trial. So it gives me four results back, and I can see I've got... Uh, an array of different uh, companies represented here in these varieties. But I can see the number of years of trial data that I have available for each one of these varieties. So 2006 to 2022 seems to be available for all of these varieties. So this is good. I'm going to have a good amount of information to compare. So the next step I want to do is I can then compare this data. And I can do it with these filters applied, or I can compare all of the data available to me just by toggling it here. So I'm going to turn off the filters because I want to look at all the data I have available for these particular varieties. So we'll go ahead and click on Compare. Great. So now I have those four varieties that I've selected here. And we can go ahead and increase our font size to be able to help with viewing this over Zoom uh, to make that a little bit more digestible for us here. So we have um, each one of those four varieties that we've selected. And you can see here that there's the different resistance and disease ratings available um, and any variety information here that's available attribute information, etc. But as I scroll down here, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this is our yield information here, as well as uh, something called the top yield group. Um, what top yield group is, is that is a way of representing consistency in that top yielding performer for a trial. So a variety gets a one if it's within that top group, gets a zero if it is not. So this gives you some indication as to the consistency in which a variety performs in that top group. So like you could before when looking at a single variety, you could go ahead and click on uh, that value and get a breakdown of all of those um, values that make up the aggregated value. Or in this particular case, since we're doing a comparison across multiple varieties, you could go ahead and click on yield over here and it's going to show you now then a, um, a breakdown of all of the varieties across all the trials that make up this average. So it gives you an indication as to the consistency and performance of this variety over time. You would have the ability if you want to apply some of the same filters that we did before. I could come in here and I could say that I want yield now where it was greater than 100 bushels per acre. And when I apply the filter, what you will see is it will filter out now the, the trials that did not have that spec and show you the ones that do. And so you can see here in this particular case for AGS 2024 in 2022 in Union, some of the varieties that we're comparing it to exceeded the filter that we applied. However, it did not. So you'll get this strike through that indicates that this value is not included in this 113.6 average here. However, it gives you an indication of what that value was as you're looking at this broken down comparison. 
So similar to what you could have done before, you can go ahead and generate a link and you can share this and make this available to anybody that you want and they will get this exact view that you're looking at with all of the filters applied and the formatting applied. Or you could go ahead and export this. You could download all of this data into Excel. When you do that, you will get the same summary view, but in addition to that, you will get separate tabs that will show you all of the detailed breakdown from each individual trial. So you have all the raw data as well. And then another option is you could choose to capture this as an image if you need to include it in a report or a PowerPoint presentation. So that's a quick look at comparison. Now I've gone back to the dashboard here now and we're going to look at uh, one more feature and that is what we call analytics um, but that can be rebranded to say whatever you want to. NC State in this particular case calls it OVT data because that's what their growers are used to looking for. So what we're looking at here now is we have our current trial year of 2022 and we're going to group our data by the data fields that we have selected. So we have yield here selected by default, but let's go ahead and add top yield group to that. We care about test weight and we care about percent lodging. Okay, so we've got these four data fields selected. Let's go ahead and rebuild our analytics. Okay, so now what we are looking at is we have data now for us for yield, top yield group, test weight, and percent lodging. Uh, that is represented for all of the trial locations and all of the varieties in 2022. So we have our varieties listed here, and you can see them down on the left, the source or the company uh, that the variety is from, and then each one of our trial locations here now is a column, and they are grouped by their region. So you can see before we were interested in Union and Rowan, they are two locations that are part of this Piedmont region. Then lastly here over on the side, what you have is we have our current year average grouped by the region or the whole state. And then you have a multi-year average. By default, most clients will have this set to three, but you can go ahead and change that value to be anything that you want. So what we have here now is that same grouped by region, but now an average across multiple years. And there'll be a little Y value and an L value up here that'll indicate the number of years and the number of locations that are represented in that average that you're looking at. This helps gives you an indication as to the variety's consistency and performance over both time and space. So that's great for location. Let's say we want to care about um, Piedmont, which is that's where our Union and Rowan locations are. So I'm going to go ahead and sort by my multi-year average. How did this variety perform over time? And you can see some of these top varieties here. I only have a single year's worth of data. So I'm going to take that with a little bit of caution. But there is a variety here that has multiple years worth of data that is bubbling to the top for yield. So that's good to know. So that's great that you look at yield, but now, okay, top yield group gives us some consistency and performance in this particular location. We can see some of these varieties performed very well in Piedmont and they did not perform well in other locations. So there might be something about uh, our climate, our soil, um, our growing practices that could give better performance for some of these varieties, which is why it's helpful sometimes to be able to look at specific locations or specific regions. But as you see, these the order here is different than what we saw in just the straight up yield. And it can be hard to remember what each one of these orders are. And we can continue to do this for test weight, lodging. Uh, now lodging would be uh, the inverse here and they only did lodging testing um, a year ago. So there's not a complete data set here for lodging. But I wanted to show you that because what it does is it actually flips the colors. So if we look back here at yield again, your green value is indicating the best value or the maximum value in this particular case. The red is the worst or the minimum value. And anything that is blue is above average statistically and anything that is yellow is below average statistically. And there's a gradient to show you how far above and below. But when you get to lodging, you want that to be less. So therefore, anything that is in green is the still the best value, but it's the lowest value whereas anything that is in red is the maximum value. So now we can take all of that information and we can boil it down into a single score. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue to sort by this Piedmont region. 
So what we are looking at here now is this is a aggregation of z-scores, which z-scores are the number of standard deviations off the mean. What that allows us to do is we can now look at a variety's performance across multiple specs. So yield, top yield, test weight, lodging, etc. You get to select as much as you want. But we also get to see its performance across multiple locations and across multiple years all boiled down into a single score that allows us to rank a variety's performance. So as you can see, a lot of these varieties that bubbled at the top only have one year's worth of data. So I want to know more information about varieties that have at least multiple years worth of data, but they perform well in the Piedmont region. So I'm going to go ahead and select these varieties here that have multiple, um, let's just grab these here that have multiple years worth of data. So now what I can do after I've selected these varieties is go ahead and click on compare. And that's going to jump me back to right where we were before, looking at comparison, but we got there in a different way by looking at analytics as opposed to querying for it. And you can see the same information that you would have had before. One of the things you will notice now, though, is that some of these varieties existed for 16 different trials, and some of them only existed for 10. So it may not be a fair and accurate comparison if some of these varieties weren't under the same environmental stresses as the others. So to compensate for that, what we can do is we can turn correlated data on. And now that's only going to return the trials where they existed, all these varieties existed in the exact same trials. And so I can do a comparison that is accurate because um, they were all under the same environmental stresses. So that is a quick summary uh, overview of some of the features available in medius.re. Some of the other features to list to be available are his ability to manage and distribute documents, such as white papers or data sheets. Uh, you can also generate um, graphs and charts dynamically, export data easily into CSV and Excel for analysis outside of medius.re as well. So thank you for your time in looking at the features available in medius.re.